I'm Manny Almanzo, the Director of Marketing here at Kilgore College, and we are privileged today to speak with Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert was a longtime instructor here at Kilgore College in the Visual Arts Department, and also he is doing adjunct work now for Kilgore College, and he teaches as well uh, dual credit classes at Longview High School, and we're so happy to be with him today. He's part of the Kilgore College family, and Frank, thank you for spending some time with us to talk about this beautiful exhibit you have here. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. So now, this is the first time that this exhibit has been shown anywhere, is that correct? That's right. This particular grouping of paintings. So feathers and autumn leaves, where did the thought come from? My wife and I have had a lot of opportunities for travel. We've spent the better part of the summer in Italy, in Florence and in Rome, and the better part of another summer in Oaxaca, Mexico. But I like my own backyard. And we have a hyperactive little border collie who was bred for herding animals. And so I channel her herding instincts by taking her for walks several times during the day. And while we're out in the neighborhood, I'll sometimes see things that are unexpected, um, kind of a moment of beauty. And now with being able to carry a phone in your pocket that's got a camera, I'll photograph those things or maybe take them back to the house. And that's how this body started. Um, seeing feathers on the ground, under the telephone wires where birds have perched and dropped their feathers. Uh, I think a lot of people would be inspired to pick them up and save them. So I've carried those home for the last several years and put them in a little dish piled up. And the, the feathers paintings came from me deciding to take close-up photographs of the pile and then isolate a composition out of those. Sometimes when I work in a series, there's got to be a first painting. And sometimes a painting will go very well for me. It, it comes easy. Other times it's a real struggle. The first ones are often a struggle because I'm working my way through a new idea. And uh, this was the first of the feather paintings. And so in a way, it's one that I'm most proud of because it came easy. And when that happens, it inspires me to quick get on to another one. And that's how the series developed. You know, you mentioned in a video that you made uh, about grackles, that you noticed 10 years ago in our area that grackles started to appear. And one of the eyes that you had for that was not so much that, oh, there was this dark looking blackbird, but you actually saw some different colors in them. Explain that and where you developed that eye to see colors and things that others don't see. Right. I think part of it is just the way my brain thinks visually since I was a kid, but I've also gone through all the formal training of art classes through college for seven years. And uh, as I was saying, every artwork you create teaches you something. And eventually, I begin to look at the complexities of light and color. Um, in walking down the street, this will happen in, in a few weeks, there, there is a yard full of maple trees and all the leaves just fell with all the colors of the rainbow. So I was inspired to take a hundred photographs of those. And that provided me with all of the resource for the autumn leaves series. Well, let's walk on over there to the autumn leaves and we can talk a little more about that. Yes, yeah, some, some of my paintings come from my big archive of photographs I've collected over the last several years. And that's how these three developed. Um, I wanted to build uh, this formal idea of shallow layers of forms so that, like a collage, one thing is on top of another which is on top of something else. And the images on top, the fruit and um, vegetables, are just forms that I keep coming back to in my sketchbooks and in my body of photographs in the archive. I also, as an artist, am going for contrasts, dark and light, and warm colors and cool colors, mixing all these different organic shapes. Um, and I moved from there to working from one subject of my photograph. 
and, and that relating to the autumn leaves where the whole composition comes from a suite of photographs of the same thing. Just walk your head over here to this part of the building. I build a painting like pieces of a puzzle. And in the smaller paintings, the pieces are so much smaller. It takes probably just as many shades of color to make a small painting as it does the big one. The big ones give me a little more room for the brush to move and the shapes are less complex because they're larger shapes. But I develop them like little puzzle pieces and I never know what the final effect of the painting is going to be until that last piece has been painted in its place. So it's a thrill for me to finish a painting. I spend a little time living with them. I put them on the wall so the paint can dry, but so I can have a look at them to see how all the pieces did finally fall together. Go to my website, which is Frank L. Herbert artist.carbonmade. And at my website, there is a, a link to my email accounts. I also have a, a YouTube channel. And on my YouTube channel, I've posted a, a promotional video that also has a link to my website and to my email addresses. Most directly, you could contact Kilgore College and the art department through Larry Kitchen the director of the art department. Well, Frank, I appreciate you taking time to show us your works and to explain what went into your works. Again, they are beautiful. The works by Frank Herbert, the Autumn Leaves and Feathers exhibit, is on display through January 29th here at the Andean Turquine Arts Gallery at Kilgore College.